Chapter Five of Book Three of Metaphysics by Aristotle, translated by John McMahon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jeffrey Edwards. Chapter Five. Now, from the same opinion originates also the theory of Protagoras, and in like manner is there a necessity that both of them should be or not be capable of verification for if all things that seem so are true and if all things that are apparent are true then must all things at the same time be true and false for many entertain contrary opinions to one another and those who do not happen to think the same with themselves they regard as victims to delusion so that the same thing must needs be and not be and if this be the case it is necessary that all things that seem so should be true for opposite sentiments do they hold with one another who speak falsehood and who speak truth if then things be so all will speak truth that from the same opinion then both of these theories originate is evident there does not however exist the same method of conducting our controversy as regards all such philosophers for some of them require persuasion and some compulsion for as many indeed as have formed opinions in this way from doubt the ignorance of these is remediable for the refutation is directed towards not the theory but the understanding and as many as speak for argument's sake refutation is a cure also of these both of that discourse which consists in voice and of that which consists in names but unto those persons who labour under doubt in this way has the opinion itself originated from sensibles the opinion i mean that contradictions and things contrary subsist together inasmuch as they see contraries arising from the same thing if therefore it is not possible that non-entity should come into existence in a similar way according to them must the thing have pre-existed namely as both contraries at once as also anaxagoras says and democritus that everything was mingled in everything for also this latter philosopher maintained that vacuity and fulness are similarly resident in any part whatsoever although the one of these is entity and the other non-entity respecting indeed therefore those who form their opinions from these data we will say that in a certain manner they speak correctly and that in a certain sense they are involved in ignorance for entity is spoken of in a twofold point of view so that it is in a way admissible that something should arise from that which has no being and that it is in a way not admissible that it should be so and that the same thing at the same time should be an entity and a non-entity but not according to the same entity for in capacity no doubt is it admissible at the same time for the same thing to be contraries but in actuality not so and further shall we deem them to suppose the existence of a certain other substance of entities in which is inherent neither motion nor corruption nor generation at all and in like manner also has the truth respecting the things apparent reached some speculators from sensibles for they do not consider it fitting that the true should be decided by plurality or fewness but the same thing seems sweet to some on tasting it and to others bitter wherefore if all persons were sick or all beside themselves but two or three were sound in health or in possession of their mind it would happen that these latter would appear to be ill and labouring under an aberration of intellect but that the rest would not seem so further to many of the rest of the animal creation do contraries appear to be the same thing as well as to us and to each very person with himself things do not always according to sense appear to be the same which description of these therefore is true or false is obscure 
for nothing the more is this true than that but both in like manner are affected as regards truth wherefore democritus says at least that positively either nothing is true or that if it be so that to us it is wrapped in obscurity but upon the whole on account of their supposing prudence no doubt to be sense and that this sense constitutes an alteration these persons affirm that the apparent according to sense is necessarily true for from these sceptics both empedocles and democritus and each of the other philosophers so to speak have become entangled in opinions of this sort for empedocles also asserts that those changing their habit change their prudence witness his words quote, for for the present counsel varies in men close quote. and in other passages he says that quote, as far as diverse men become so far is present also in them always diverse thought close quote. and parmenides evinces the same mode of thinking for instance in the words quote, for as each has a tempering of graceful limbs so present in man is mind for the same thing with whatever thinks is the nature of limbs in men both every and all for more than this is mind and the apothem of anaxagoras also is remembered amongst certain of his associates namely that entities are such to them as they may have supposed them now they say that even homer seems to have been in possession of this opinion because he made hector after he was deranged from the wound to lie in a delirious state as if even those of unsound mind were capable of exercising thought indeed but not the same thoughts as with those of sound mind it is evident therefore if both be exertions of prudence that also entities subsist in this way and not in this way at the same time wherefore also most difficult is that which ensues from this theory for if they who particularly perceived as true that which it is admissible should be true but these are they who especially seek after it and love it if these persons hold such opinions and manifest such tenets respecting truth how is it not becoming those to despair who attempt to philosophize for the pursuit of things eluding their grasp would constitute the investigation of truth but a cause of this opinion of theirs is the following that from time to time they have examined into the truth concerning entities no doubt but the entities they have supposed to be sensibles merely now in these is inherent much of the nature of the indefinite and that of entity which subsists in such a manner as we have declared wherefore they speak naturally but they do not speak things that are true for so is it more in harmony for them to speak after this manner than as epicharmus in his reply to xenophanes but moreover seeing the whole of this visible nature in motion but respecting what is being changed seeing nothing verified regarding at least what is being changed altogether and everywhere they considered that verification was not a thing that is possible for from this hypothesis blossomed that most extreme opinion of those philosophers mentioned just now namely that of those speculators who profess to adopt the philosophy of heraclitus and such as cratylus held who at last was of opinion that one ought to speak of nothing but moved merely his finger and who rebuked heraclitus for saying that it is not possible to enter the same river twice for he himself was of opinion that you could not do so once in reply however to this theory we will also say that there is some foundation in reason for their supposing with these that that which undergoes a change when it does change may not be considered as existing this however is a circumstance attended with doubtfulness for the rejecting substance retains something of that which is rejected and of that which is being produced must there now necessarily exist something and if in short it is undergoing corruption there will subsist a certain entity 
and if it is being produced there must needs be that from which it is produced and by which it is generated and that this process goes not on in a progression to infinity omitting however these arguments let us make those assertions following namely that not the same thing is the alteration according to quantity and according to quality grant indeed that as far as quantity goes it does not abide the same but it is according to form that we know all things but further it is worth while reproving those who think thus because although knowing the number of sensibles themselves and that in the case of the fewer number of sensibles this state of flux and mutation was to be found they have yet manifested similar sentiments respecting the whole heaven for the place about us of what is sensible continues alone to subsist in a condition of corruption and generation but this in no wise so to say is part of the universe wherefore more justly would it be on account of the greater number of witnesses to have acquitted these than on account of these the fewer to have condemned those and further it is evident that in reply also to these we may use the same arguments with those that have been originally laid down by us for that there is some nature immovable has been demonstrated to their satisfaction and has gained their assent it happens however to those at least who say that a thing is and is not at the same time to affirm all things to be in a state of rest rather than of motion for on this hypothesis there exists nothing into which anything is changed for all things are inherent in all regarding however the truth that not everything that is apparent is true in the first place indeed it might be replied that sense to be sure is not deceitful in what falls within its own peculiar province but that imagination is not the same with sense it is worthy of consideration and wonder in the next place if they really are in doubt of this whether magnitudes are so great and colours such as they appear to those at a distance or such as they appear to those that are near and whether they are such as they appear to persons in health or such as they appear to persons in sickness and in regard of weight whether things more weighty are such as appear so to the weak or such as seem so to the strong and lastly in respect of truth whether things are true such as appear so to the sleeping or such as seem so to those who are awake for that they do not in reality think so at least is evident for no one if even he supposes when asleep by night that he were in athens when he is in libya goes when he awakes to the odeon and further respecting the future as also plato says doubtless not similarly decisive is the opinion of the physician and that of the ignorant quack for example as to the likelihood that one will be sound or that one will not be so and further in the case of the senses themselves not similarly decisive is the testimony of sense in respect of what is foreign and in respect of what is its peculiar province or of that which is near and of that which is remote from itself but respecting colour it is sight and not taste that judges and respecting juices it is taste but not sight each of which never at the same time affirms about the same thing that simultaneously a thing is so and not so disposed but neither in a different period have the senses doubted about the passion at least to which they are subject but about that in which the passion is an accident now i say for example that the same wine either from being changed or from the bodily organ being changed might so appear at one time to be sweet and at another time not sweet but the sweet then at least when it is sweet is not such for it never has undergone a change but always verification thereof is possible and of necessity is it that such will be a thing that is sweet all these theories however overturn this conclusion since also if there is not a substance of anything neither is there anything necessarily subsisting for it is not admissible for the necessary to be at one time disposed one way and at another time another 
wherefore if there is anything of necessity it will not be disposed both so and not so if also upon the whole what is sensible exists merely nothing would there be subsisting inasmuch as animated beings would have no existence for sense would have no existence perhaps then on the supposition of the non-existence of sense the truth would be that neither sensibles nor sensations exist for of the percipient is sense and affection but that it is impossible that the subjects themselves which produce sense have not any existence even though sense exist not for doubtless sense itself is not of itself but there is something else also different from and independent of sense which must needs be prior to sense for the moving cause is prior in nature to that which is being moved and if these assertions are made one with another not a whit the less is the same theory true chapter six but there are some who doubt and are sceptics both amongst those who are persuaded of the reality of these opinions and those who merely affirm these theories for they ask who is it that judgeth him that is in good health and him that upon the whole is capable of forming his decision correctly about each particular now doubts of such a sort as this are similar to one's doubting whether we now sleep or are awake for all such doubts are tantamount to the same for these persons demand that there should be a reason of all things for they seek for a first principle and expect to obtain this by demonstration whereas at least that they are not persuaded of the validity of their position they make manifest in their acts but as we have said this is the characteristic property of these philosophers for they seek for a reason of things of which there is no reason for the principle of demonstration is not demonstration these therefore indeed would be easily persuaded of this for it is not difficult to apprehend they however who seek in reason compulsion merely seek an impossibility for what is contrary they deem it right to speak immediately uttering contrary things but if all things are not relatives but some are also themselves by themselves that is absolute in such a case everything apparent would not be true for the apparent is apparent to some one therefore he that says that all things apparent are true makes all entities relatives wherefore also must the precaution be adopted by those who seek for compulsion in reason and at the same time also think right to subjoin a reason that not the apparent is true but that the apparent is true to whomever it appears so and when it appears and how far and in what manner but if they subjoin a reason to be sure but do not in this way subjoin it it will happen speedily unto them that they should speak things that are contrary for it is possible for the same thing to appear honey as far as the sight goes and not to appear so to the taste and as we have two eyes not the same will a thing appear to each organ of vision if they be dissimilar whereas in reply to those at least who on account of the causes originally enumerated affirm the apparent to be true and for this reason content that all things in like manner are false and true in reply to these i say it may be affirmed that neither the same things appear the same to all men nor to the same person do the same things invariably appear the same but frequently things contrary at the same time for the touch in the alteration of the fingers says that there are two objects but the organ of sight one but neither to the same sense at least do the same things seem the same and according to the same and in like manner also in the same moment of time wherefore this would be true but perhaps for this cause it is necessary to say to those who speak not on account of doubt but for talk's sake that this is not absolutely true but that it is true relatively to this person and as doubtless it has been formerly affirmed it is necessary also to make all things relative both in reference to opinion and sense 
so that nothing either has been produced or will arise except on the supposition of some person previously exercising thought but if anything has been generated or will arise it is evident that all things would not be according to opinion further if one thing exists it exists in relation to one or in relation to a definite thing and if the same thing is both half and equal such exists in relation to these yet the equal is not in reference to the double now in relation to opinion if man and the subject of the opinion be the same man will not be the thinking subject but the subject of opinion but if each thing will be in relation to the thinking subject the thinking subject will subsist in relation to things infinite in species that indeed therefore most indisputable of all is the opinion that assertions in opposition are not at the same time true and what happens in the way of consequence unto those who say that they are true and why they say so let thus much suffice to have been spoken but since it is impossible that contradiction should be true of the same subject at the same time it is evident that neither can contraries possibly subsist at the same time in the same subject for indeed of contraries one or other is not the less privation but privation of substance is negation from some definite genus if therefore it is impossible at the same time to affirm and deny with truth it is impossible that also contraries should be inherent in the same subject at the same time but either both must be inherent partially or the one partially and the other simply or absolutely chapter seven but truly neither is it possible that there is any mean between a contradiction but there is a necessity either of asserting or denying any one thing whatsoever of one now in the first place this is evident to those who define what truth and falsehood are for indeed the assertion that entity does not exist and that non-entity does is a falsehood but that entity exists and that non-entity does not exist is truth wherefore the person who affirms that this medium is in existence or is not will speak truth or utter falsehood but neither is entity nor non-entity said not to exist or to exist further either will there be a mean between contradiction as that of a darkish colour between black and white or it will be as that which is neutral between man and horse if therefore this subsist in this way there would be no change for a change takes place from something that is not good into that which is good or from this latter into what is not good but now it is always apparent as taking place for there is not a change existing but one into opposites and media if however there is a mean so also would there be a certain production into a thing that is white not from that which is not white but this is not perceived as being the case further everything intelligible and mental the understanding either affirms or denies and this is manifest from definition when truth is spoken or falsehood when indeed in this way it is composed as an assertion or negation truth is spoken but when in that way falsehood further must there be in all contradictions a mean save where the assertion is made only for argument or talk's sake so that also one will neither utter truth nor not utter truth and besides entity and non-entity there will be something in subsistence wherefore besides generation and corruption some change will there be moreover in whatsoever genera negation introduces the contrary in these also will be found this medium as for example in numbers a number neither odd nor not odd such however is impossible and from the definition is this evident further would we go on in a progression to infinity and not only will there be sesquialterate entities but even more than this for again it will be possible to deny this in regard of the assertion and negation of the medium of the former contradiction and this will be something for there will be a certain other substance of this 
moreover as to the question if a thing is white when one says that it is not nothing has he denied than that it is but that a thing is not amounts to a negation but from the same source as other paradoxes has this opinion reached unto certain speculators for when they are unable to solve arguments open to dispute giving in to reason they consent to the truth of whatever is brought out by syllogism some therefore make assertions from some such cause as this but others on account of requiring in their investigations the reason of all things the principle however in respect of all these is to be derived from definition but definition arises from their necessarily signifying something for the sentence of which the name is assigned becomes the definition of a thing and the theory of heraclitus affirming all things to be and not to be appeared to make all things true but that of anaxagoras was that there is a certain medium between contradiction so that all things are false for when they are mingled neither is the mixture good nor not good wherefore there is nothing that one can affirm as true chapter eight now these distinctions having been laid down it is evident that the predications made in one way only and also those that are made about all it is impossible should be as certain affirm they are some indeed saying that nothing is true for nothing they say hinders all things from being in such a way as that the diagonal of a square is commensurable with its side but others affirming that all things are true for almost all these assertions are the same with those of heraclitus for this philosopher in affirming that all things are true and all things false affirms also separately each of these theories wherefore if those are impossible it is impossible likewise that these should be so but further are those palpably contradictions which likewise it is not possible should at the same time be true nor doubtless is it possible that all should be false although at least it would the rather seem to be admissible from what has been stated but in reply to all such theories must the question be asked as also has been declared in the discussions above not if there is something or if there is not but if something has a signification wherefore from the definition is the discussion to be drawn by assuming what falsehood or truth signifies but if the true and the false be nothing else than to assert what is true or deny what is false it is impossible that all things be false for it is necessary that either portion of the contradiction be true further if it be necessary either to assert or deny everything it is impossible for both to be false for either part of the contradiction is false truly also doth the common saying happen unto all such theories that they overthrow or stultify themselves for the person that says that all things are true renders the statement contrary to this true also wherefore he makes his own affirmation not true for the contrary says that it is not true but he that says that all things are false even himself falsifies his own position if however they make an exception the one making an exception in the case of the contrary that it is not alone true and the other in the case of his own assertion that it is not false in no wise the less does it happen unto these sceptics that they require the truth and falsehood of an infinite number of assertions for he who says that a true theory is true agrees with the affirmation that it is true but this will go on in a progression infinity it is evident however that neither they who lay down that all things are at rest speak the truth nor they who say that all things are in motion for if indeed all things are at rest the same things will always be true and false now this appears to be a thing undergoing a change for he who speaks once himself was not and again will not be if all things however are in motion there will be nothing that is true all things in that case are false but it has been demonstrated that this is impossible further must entity needs undergo a change for from something into something is the change made but doubtless neither are all things at rest or in motion at any particular time 
but nothing subsists in such a condition of rest or motion eternally for there is something which always moves the things that are in motion and the first imparter of motion is itself immovable end of chapter eight and end of book three recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter one of book four of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter one that is called a principle from whence anything has had motion imparted to it in the first instance for example the principle of length and of a way from hence indeed is the actual principle but from the contrary a different one but again that is called a first principle from whence each thing would spring in the most beautiful manner as for instance even in the case of discipline the beginning must be made sometimes not from what is first and the principle of a thing but from whence one may learn with the greatest facility and again that is a principle from whence is produced the first of a thing that is inherent as for example a keel of a vessel and a foundation of a house and some suppose the heart of animals to be a thing of this sort but others the brain and others whatever else of this kind they may happen with and again that is a principle from whence the first of a thing not inherent is produced and whence motion and change have first been naturally fitted to commence as for example the child from the father and the mother and the battle from abuse and that is a first principle according to the free impulse of which things in motion are moved and things undergoing a change are changed as in cities dominions and dynasties and kingdoms and tyrannies are styled principles and both the arts and especially those of them that are architectonic are called principles further whence a thing is known first this is called a principle of that thing as for example the hypotheses are principles of demonstration in as many ways also as first principles are styled are causes in like manner denominated for all causes are first principles common to all first principles is the being the original from whence a thing either is or is produced or is known but of these principles some indeed are inherent and others are extrinsic wherefore nature constitutes both a first principle and an element is so likewise and understanding and free will and substance and the final cause for in the case of many things the principle of knowledge and of motion is the good and the fair chapter two in one way that is called cause from which as inherent anything is produced as for example the brass of a statue and the silver of a cup and the genera of these but in another way the form and exemplar are regarded as causes and this is the reason of the formal cause and the genera of these as for instance in the diapason the cause is the ratio of two to one and in general number and the parts those that are in the ratio belong to this order of cause but further that constitutes a cause from whence is the first principle of change or of rest as for instance the designing cause and the father of a child and generally speaking the forming of that which is being formed and that capable of effecting a change of that which is undergoing a change further a cause is as the end this however is the final cause as for instance health of walking for why does one walk we say that he may have good health and saying so we think that we have assigned the cause and as many operations doubtless as take place between any other source of motion and the end are regarded as causes 
for example of health tenuity or purging or medicines or instruments for all these are on account of the end but they differ from one another in respect of being some as instruments and others as things done causes indeed therefore are enumerated almost somehow after this manner and seeing that causes are thus multifariously denominated it happens that many of them are causes of the same thing not according to accident for instance of the statue both the statuary art and the brass not according to anything that is different but so far forth as it is a statue this however does not take place in the same manner but the brass is as matter and the art as the origin of motion or the efficient cause and some things are reciprocally causes of one another as for example labour of a good habit of body and this latter again of labour yet not in the same manner but the one is as the end and the other as the principle of motion further the same thing sometimes is the cause of things that are contrary for that which when present is the cause of this particular thing this when absent we sometimes denominate the cause of the contrary for example the absence of the pilot is the cause of the capsizing of the boat the presence of whom is the cause of its preservation both however as well the presence as the absence of the pilot are as efficient causes that is causes imparting motion now all the causes just enumerated fall under four modes the most evident for indeed the elements of syllables and the matter of things constructed by art and the fire and earth and all such bodies and the parts of a whole and the hypotheses of the conclusion are causes as that whereof other things are produced but of these some are as the subject as for instance the parts but others as the formal cause for example both the whole and the composition and the form but the seed and the physician and the deliberator and in short the maker all are the causes of the principle of change or of stability but the rest as the end and the good are causes of other things for the final cause aims at being the best and an end to the other things let there be however no actual difference in saying a thing is good or appears good these causes indeed therefore are so many in species but the modes of causes are doubtless many in number these however become less numerous by being reduced under heads for causes are called so in many ways and of those things of the same species antecedently and subsequently one thing is the cause of another as for example of health the physician and the artisan and of the diapason the double and number and always those things that comprise anything whatsoever of singulars but moreover cause is denominated as the accident and the genera of these as for instance of a statue in one sense polycleitus is the cause and in another the statuary because it is accidental with the statuary to be polycleitus and the things embracing the accidental are causes for instance man is a cause of a statue or also in general animal because polycleitus is a man and man is an animal but also of the accidents one is more remote and another more contiguous than others for example just as if the white and the musical should be termed a cause of the statue but not merely polycleitus or man but besides all things both these that are denominated appropriately or strictly and those according to accident some causes are denominated as things endued with a capacity but others as things energizing as the cause of the house being built is the builder or the builder considered as in the act of building in like manner with what has been stated will be mentioned also the causes in the case of which there are causes as for example of this statue as far forth as it is a statue or in general of an image or of this brass so far forth as it is brass 
or in short matter and in the case of the accidents it is so in like manner further also these and those shall be predicated as connected together as for example not polycleitus nor a statuary but polycleitus a statuary but however all these at least are six in number yet are expressed in a twofold manner for either as a singular are they denominated or as the genus thereof or as the accident or as genus of the accident or as these connected together or simply expressed further all of them as energizing or according to capacity but thus far is there a difference that causes energizing and singulars and those of which they are the causes subsist at the same time and at the same time cease to be as for example the person healing with that person that is being restored to health and this person the builder with that which is being built not invariably however is this the case with regard to causes in capacity for not at the same time sink into decay the house and the builder chapter three an element is called that from which as an inherent first principle and indivisible in species something is compounded into a different species as for instance the elements of voice are those things of which the voice is composed and into which it is ultimately divided those elements however no longer are divided into other voices different from them in species but even though they be divided the parts would be of the same species as for example the portion of water is water but a portion of the syllable is not a syllable in like manner also do the old philosophers who enumerate the elements of bodies say that they are those entities into which bodies are ultimately divided but those no longer are divisible into others different in species and whether such may be one or many these they yet call elements similarly also are denominated the elements both of diagrams and in general those of demonstrations for the primary demonstrations and those that are inherent in many more demonstrations themselves are styled elements of demonstrations but of such kind are the first syllogisms which are composed of three terms by means of the one middle and by a transference of the meaning they hence call an element that which being one and small may be useful for many purposes wherefore also what is small and simple and indivisible is styled an element hence it has come to pass that those things which are most especially universal are elements because each of them is one and simple and is inherent in many things or in all or in as many as possible and to some speculators it seems that the one and the point are first principles since therefore those things called genera are universal and indivisible for there is one definition of them certain persons call the genera elements and that too in preference to difference for the genus is more universal for in whatsoever the difference resides the genus also follows but in what the genus resides does not in every way constitute the difference common however to all is the characteristic that the being of the element of each body is the first inherent quality in each chapter four nature is called in one way the production of things that are by nature as for instance if one putting forth his voice should articulate the letter u and in another as that from which as being inherent that which is being naturally produced is primarily formed moreover nature is the origin of the earliest motion in each of the things in itself subsisting by nature so far as it is this very thing now those things are said to be produced by nature as many as involve growth through another body by means of contact and growth along with or growth beside just as embryos but the being connascent differs from contact for in the latter there must needs be nothing else besides the touch 
but in things that are connate there is some one thing that is the same in both which instead of involving contact causes them to be connascent and causes them to be one according to what is continuous and involving quantity but not according to quality moreover is that styled nature from which as its primary matter there either is or arises anything of the things that subsist by nature being without regular motion and unchangeable from the power which belongs to itself for instance of a statue or of brazen vessels the brass is called the nature and of wooden vessels the wood but in like manner is it in the case of the rest for each thing is from these the primary matter remaining in a state of conservation for in this way also do they affirm the elements of those things that are by nature to constitute nature some saying that this is fire but others earth and others air and others water but others asserting some other such thing and others some of these but others all of them in another way however nature is styled the substance of things that exist by nature for instance those who affirm that nature is the earliest synthesis as empedocles says that quote, nature is there of no one of entities but merely mixture and of things mixed a change and thus by men is nature styled close quote. wherefore as many things also as by nature exist or are produced that being in existence already from which it is natural that they should arise or should have their being not as yet do we say that such is in possession of nature unless they have the species and the form by nature then subsists that which is composed from both of these as for instance animals and their parts nature however constitutes the primary matter and this in a twofold sense either the primary in reference to a thing itself or upon the whole the first for example of brazen works the first in reference to these is the brass and water perhaps in general if the primary matter of all things that are capable of being liquefied be water and nature constitutes both species and substance and this is the end of production but now metaphorically speaking and generally every substance is called nature for this reason because nature also is a certain substance doubtless from the things that have been stated the earliest nature and that termed so with precision is the substance i mean of those things possessing the principle of motion in themselves so far forth as themselves are such for matter in respect of its being susceptible of this is styled nature and generations and the act of production are termed so in consequence of their motions being from this and the first principle of motion in those things that by nature subsist is nature inherent as a first principle in a manner either potentially or actually chapter five necessary is to find that without which as a cooperating cause it is not admissible for a thing to exist as for instance respiration and nourishment are necessary conditions for an animal for without these it is impossible that an animal can exist and that is necessary without which it is not possible for what is good either to subsist or to arise or to cast aside any evil or that any evil should be exterminated for instance the drinking a certain medicine is a necessary precaution against sickness and the sailing to egina against the loss of one's property further the compulsory and compulsion are styled necessary but this is that which constitutes an obstruction and is capable of offering an hindrance to impulse and free will for what is compulsory is styled necessary wherefore also is it a thing that is sad as also evanus has it quote, for everything necessary is a thing doleful close quote. and force or compulsion involves a certain necessity as also sophocles says quote, but force compels me to do these things close quote 
and necessity seems to be a something that is inevitable correctly so for it is contrary to the motion that results according to free will and according to the power of reasoning further that which does not admit of being otherwise than it is we say is in this way disposed as a necessary thing and according to this acceptation of the word what is necessary and all the other things that are so are also in a manner styled necessary for the violent or compulsory is called necessary either in regard of action or passion at such times as when a person cannot make any move according to impulse on account of some constraining cause so that this is a necessary impulse on account of which the thing could not be otherwise and in the case of the cooperating causes of the principle of vitality and the good it is so in like manner for when it is not admissible on the one hand to obtain indeed the good and on the other to live and to exist without certain things these things then are necessary and this cause constitutes a certain necessity further does demonstration belong to those things that are necessary because it is not possible that the things that are being demonstrated should be otherwise if the thing be absolutely demonstrated but causes of this are things primary which it is impossible should subsist otherwise than they do out of which is formed the syllogism of some things truly is there a different cause from themselves of their being necessary but of others there is no such cause but on account of these are other things that are from necessity wherefore what is primary and what is absolute or simple are strictly necessary for it is not possible that this can be disposed in many ways therefore neither can it subsist in different ways at different times for on such a supposition would it now be disposed in many ways if therefore there are certain things that are eternal and immovable there is in them nothing compulsory or contrary to nature chapter six one is called that which subsists as such according to accident in one way and in another that which subsists essentially a thing is called one according to accident for instance coruscus and what is musical and the musical coruscus for it is one and the same thing to say coruscus and what is musical as to say coruscus the musician also to say the musical and the just is one with saying the just musician coruscus for all these are called one according to accident the just indeed and the musical because they are accidents in one substance but what is musical and coruscus because either is an accident in the other likewise also in a certain sense the musical coruscus is one with coruscus because either of the parts of those that are in this sentence is an accident in the other as for example what is musical in coruscus and the musical coruscus in just coruscus because one portion of either is an accident in the same one for there is no difference whether what is musical is an accident in coruscus or coruscus the just in the musical coruscus in like manner however will one be denominated according to accident though it should be predicated of the genus or of some universal names as for instance if man were said to be the same with a musical man for that it should be so either because the musical is an accident in the man being one substance or because both are accidents in any one of those which are singulars as in coruscus nevertheless both are not inherent in the same manner but the one perhaps as genus and in the substance and the other as a habit or passion of the substance therefore as many things as are expressed according to accident are styled one after this manner but of things denominated one essentially some are styled so on account of their being continuous as for instance a bundle held together by a string and a piece of wood by glue and a line even though it be curved yet if it be continuous is called one as also each of the parts of the body for instance a leg and an arm now of these very things those are more one which by nature are continuous than those that are continuous by art 
but that is called continuous of which the motion is one essentially and also which it is not possible should be otherwise and motion is one when it is indivisible and indivisible according to time those things however are essentially continuous as many as are not one by contact for if you were to place sticks touching one another you would not say that these are one either one piece of wood or one body or anything else that is continuous and indeed in general things that are continuous are called one even though they may have a curve and still rather things that have not a curve thus the leg and thigh are more one than the leg and foot together because it is possible that the motion of the leg and foot be not one and the straight line is one rather than the curved line but the curved and that which has an angle we call both one and not one because it is admissible that both the motion of the whole should not be at the same time and yet that at the same time should be motion of a part but part and the whole of a straight line are always at the same time in motion together and no such portion as involves magnitude partly remains at rest and partly is in motion as of a line that is curved further in another way a thing is called one in respect of the subject being in species indifferent or destitute of a difference but things that are indifferent are those of which the form according to sense is indivisible and the subject is either the first or the last in respect of the end for both wine is called one and water one so far forth as either is indivisible according to the form and all fluids are styled one as oil wine and things that are soluble because the ultimate subject of all these is the same for all these are in reality water and air but those things are styled one also of which the genus is one differing by opposite differences and all these are called one because one genus is the subject of the differences for instance horse man dog is a certain one because all of them are animals and doubtless they are one in some similar manner as the matter is one these things however sometimes in this way are styled one and sometimes the superior genus is regarded one which is denominated the same if those higher up than these be the ultimate species of the genus as for example the isosceles to be sure and the equilateral are one and the same figure because both are triangles but they are not the same triangles further are those things styled one the definition of whatsoever of which denominating the essence of them is indivisible as far as regards another definition signifying the being of the thing for every actual definition is essentially indivisible for so also both that which has undergone increase and diminution is one because the definition is one as in the case of surfaces possessing length and breadth the definition of the species is one in general however are those things one of which the perception is indivisible i mean that which perceives what the essence or formal principle is and which cannot be separated either in time or place or definition these most especially i say are one and of these as many as are substances for universally whatever things do not involve division so far forth as they have it not so far are they styled one for example if man as far as he is a man has not a division he is one man and if an animal as far as it is an animal is indivisible animal is one but if magnitude as far as magnitude is concerned is indivisible magnitude is one the most things no doubt then are styled one because some one different thing they either affect or suffer or possess or because of their being relative to some one thing but those things primarily denominated one are those of which the substance is one one however either in continuity or species or definition for also we reckon as plural or many either those things that are not continuous or those of which the form is not one or of which the definition is not one 
but further is it the case that we say sometimes that anything whatsoever is one provided only it involves quantity and continuity and we sometimes say that it is not one if it be not a certain whole that is if it does not possess one form for instance we would not say that in like manner a shoe is one when looking at the portions of that shoe any way whatsoever put together although there may be continuity involved therein but if it be in such a position of its parts as to be in reality a shoe and to have a certain form it would already then be one wherefore also of lines the circular is particularly one because it is entire and perfect of the one however the very essence consists in this that it is the principle of a certain number for the first measure is the principle of each genus thereof for that whereby as primary we make a thing known this is the first measure of each genus therefore the first principle of that which may be known constitutes in regard of each genus the one but the one is not the same in all the genera for here it is diasis and there a vowel or a mute but of gravity there is a different one and of motion another everywhere however is unity indivisible either in form or in quantity that indeed therefore which is indivisible according to quantity and so far forth as it is a quantity i mean what is in every direction indivisible and is without position this is called an unit or monad but that which is in every direction indivisible and involves a position is a point and that which is divisible in one direction is a line and that capable of a twofold division a surface but that which in every way and in three directions is divisible according to quantity is a body and conversely that which is divisible in a twofold respect is a surface and that in a single direction a line and that divisible everywhere in three directions is a body but that divisible nowhere according to quantity a point and a monad the one without position a monad and the other with position a point and moreover some things are one according to number but others according to species and others according to genus and others according to analogy those things are one in number of which the matter is one but in species of which the definition is one but in genus of which there is the same figure of predication but according to analogy are things one as many as are disposed as one thing in relation to another the subsequent however invariably follows the things that are prior as for instance whatsoever things are one in number are also one in species but whatsoever things are one in species are not all one in number but all things are one in genus whatsoever are likewise so in species but whatsoever are one in genus are not all one in species but are so in analogy and whatsoever things are one analogically are not also in genus it is manifest however also that plurality will be spoken of in an opposite manner to the one partly from the fact of its being not continuous and partly from having its matter divisible according to species either as the first matter or the ultimate matter but partly from possessing many of those reasons or definitions which declare the essence of a thing or its very nature end of chapter six of book four recording in memory of mitchell edwards seven of book four of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter seven entity is denominated partly as that which subsists according to accident and partly that which subsists essentially an entity subsists according to accident as when we say that a just man is musical and that the man is musical and that the musician is a man 
speaking in a similar manner as when we say that the musical man builds because it is an accident to the builder to be a musician or for the musician to be a builder for the affirming that this particular thing is that signifies that this thing is an accident in that so also in the case of the instances that have been mentioned when we say that the man is a musician and that the musician is a man or that one who is white is the musician or that the latter is white we say this because both of these are accidents in the same subject but we say that because they are accidents in entity but that the musician is a man we say because the being a musician is an accident to this person so also is it said that what is white is a man because that is a man to which the being white is an accident things indeed therefore said to subsist according to accident are expressed in this way either because both are inherent in the same entity or because they are inherent in that entity or because they are the same with that in which the accidents are inherent and of which the thing itself is predicated entities also are said to subsist essentially whatsoever signify the figures of predication for as often as they are predicated so often do they signify essence since therefore of the things that are predicated some signify what a thing is or quiddity and others quality and others quantity and others relation and others action or passion and some the place where and others the time when to each of these the being or essence signifies the same thing for there is no difference in the expression the man is in a healthy state from this namely the man is healthy or the man is walking or is cutting from the expression man walks or cuts and in like manner also is it in the case of the rest further the words quote, to be close quote, and quote, it is close quote, signify that a thing is true but the words quote, not to be close quote, that it is not true but false in like manner is it the case both in respect to affirmation and negation as for example he who says that socrates is musical says so because this is true or he who says that socrates is not white says so because it is true he however who says that the diameter is not incommensurable says so because this is false further quote, to be close quote, and quotes, being signify that which is expressed partly as potentially and partly as actually of those things that have been enumerated for we say also that seeing is both seeing in potentiality expressly and in actuality and similarly we say that he is endued with scientific knowledge who both has the ability to employ scientific knowledge and does actually employ it and that a thing is in a condition of rest both in which rest is at present inherent and which involves the capability of remaining in a state of quiescence but in like manner also is it in the case of substances for we speak of the existence of mercury in the stone and the half of the line and we call that corn which not yet has reached a state of maturity when however a thing is potential and when it is not as yet potential must be defined elsewhere chapter eight as regards substance both simple bodies as for instance earth and fire and water and such like are called substances and in general bodies are styled so and animals consisting of these and those beings that are of the nature of demons and the parts of these now all these are denominated substances because they are not predicated of a subject whereas other things are predicated of these but in another way is that styled substance whatever may be the cause of being and may be inherent in such as are not predicated of a subject for example soul in an animal further as many parts as are inherent in such things that both define and signify quote, the what close quote, a certain thing is on the removal of which the whole is taken away 
as for example if superficies be taken away body also is destroyed as some say and superficies is destroyed by taking away a line and in general number seems to certain to be a thing of this kind for that if it is removed away nothing can subsist and that it defines all things such parts we may consider substances further the essence of which the formal cause is the definition this also is styled the substance of each thing now substance happens in two ways to be styled substance both as the ultimate subject which no longer is predicated of anything else and as that which may be this certain particular thing and may be separable but such is the form and the species of each thing chapter nine but the same are styled partly according to accident as the white and the musical are the same because they are accidents in the same subject and man and musician are the same because either is an accident in the other i mean that man is musical because the musical is an accident in man and this is the same with either and either of these the same with this for also with the man that is musical both man and musical are styled the same and that is regarded the same with those wherefore also all these are not predicated universally for it is not true to say that every man is the same thing with what is musical for universals are absolute existences but accidents are not absolute existences but are simply predicated of singulars for it seems the same thing to be socrates and socrates the musical for the expression socrates is not affirmed of all wherefore not every socrates is predicated as every man is and some things in this way are called the same some things however are called the same essentially in the same way as unity also for those things likewise of which the matter is one either in species or in number or in genus are called the same and those of which the substance is one are called the same wherefore it is evident that sameness is a certain unity of the being of either many things or when one employs anything as many as when one affirms the same thing to be the same with itself for he employs that thing as two but diverse are those things called of which either the species are numerous or the matter or the definition of the substance and in general is the diverse denominated in a manner opposite to the same and those things are styled different whatsoever are diverse being however in some respect the same not merely in number but either in species or genus or analogy further things are considered different of which the genus is diverse and the things that are contrary and whatsoever involve diversity in the substance similar are those things styled both which everywhere undergo the same affection and undergo more of the same affections than of the diverse and of which the quality is one and in as many of the contraries as a change is possible that which possesses more of these or the more important amongst these is similar to that thing things that are dissimilar however are denominated in an opposite way to those that are similar chapter ten things that are opposite are called contradiction and contraries and relations and privation and habit and those things from which ultimate things arise and those into which they are resolved as for instance the generations and corruptions of bodies and whatsoever things it is not admissible at the same time should be present in that which is receptive of both these are said to be opposite either themselves or those whereof they are compounded for black and white at the same time are not inherent in the same subject wherefore those colours of which they are compounded are opposite to these those things are called contraries both those which cannot be present in the same subject at the same time of things that differ in genus and those things are called contraries which involve the greatest amount of difference of those that are in the same genus and things that widely differ in the same recipient and which widely differ of those under the same capacity and those of which there is the greatest difference either simply or according to genus or according to species 
and other things are styled contraries some as having such things in possession and others as being recipients of such and some in being effective or in being capable of undergoing passive conditions or in being agents or being passive or being rejections or affinities or habits or privations of these and of things of this sort since unity and entity however are spoken of in many ways there is a necessity of the other things also following as many as are expressed according to these wherefore also will there be a distribution of the same and the diverse and the contrary so that there must needs be something diverse in each category and diverse in species are those things called as many as being of the same genus are not subalternate and as many as being in the same genus involve a difference and as many as in the substance are related in the way of contrariety and contraries are diverse in the species of one another either all or those which are denominated primarily and are those of whatever in the ultimate species of the genus the definitions are diverse as for instance man and horse which are individuals in the genus but the definitions of them are diverse and those are contraries as many as being in the same substance involve a difference those things however are in species the same which are expressed in an opposite way to these chapter eleven prior and subsequent are things called some as in the case of a certain thing existing as first and as a first principle in each genus for prior is that which is nearer a certain first principle defined either simply and by nature or relatively or according to place or by certain things as for instance some things are prior in place from the fact of being nearer either by nature to a certain definite place as to the mean or the extreme or by some ordinary relation in this way and that which is more remote from this definite locality is subsequent other things prior and subsequent however are so in accordance with time for some things indeed are considered prior as they are more remote from the present moment for instance in the case of things that have taken place in time past for the trojan annals are prior to the median because they are further removed from the present time and other things are prior in regard of being nearer the present time as in the case of things to come for the nemean games are prior to the pythian because it is an event nearer the present using the present as a first principle and a thing that is first some things also according to motion are prior and subsequent for that which is more immediate to the first moving power is prior as for example a boy is prior to a man and this also is a certain first principle simply considered some things also are prior according to potentiality for that which is supereminent in potentiality is prior and that which is more potential is prior but that nature is of such a kind as according to the free will of which another must needs follow which is also posterior wherefore in the event of that one not imparting motion the consequence will be that no motion should ensue in the other and in the event of that one imparting motion that motion should ensue in the other but free will constitutes a first principle also things according to order are styled prior and subsequent but these are such as according to some one relation defined are distant proportionally as for example in a dance the person standing second is prior to one that stands third and the paranet to the neat in a musical instrument for in the former is the person who presides and in the latter the medium is a first principle these things indeed therefore are styled prior in this way but in another way is a thing prior in knowledge as if it were even absolutely prior of these things however that are otherwise some are according to reason and some according to sense for certainly according to reason things that are universal are prior but according to sense the singulars are prior and according to the reason also the accident is prior to the whole as the musical is before a man that is musical for the entire reason will not be without the part although it is not possible to be musical 
when there is not a certain one that is musically gifted further the passive conditions of things that are prior are called prior as for instance straightness is prior to smoothness for the one is an essential affection of a line and the other of a superficies some things therefore are called prior and subsequent in this way but others are termed so according to nature and substance as many as it is admissible can be in subsistence without others but others cannot subsist without them which opinion plato adopted but since quote, the being close quote, is in many ways denominated in the first place the subject is prior through which the substance is prior in the next place the things according to potentiality and actuality are otherwise for according to potentiality are some things prior and others according to actuality subsequent as for instance according to potentiality is the half prior to the whole and the part to the whole and the matter to the substance but according to actuality is this a thing that is subsequent for when dissolution has taken place things will subsist according to actuality in a certain manner it is true all things that are styled prior and subsequent are expressed according to these for some according to generation it is admissible may subsist without others as the whole without the parts but some according to corruption as the part is prior to the whole but it is in like manner with the rest chapter twelve potentiality is called the first principle of motion or change in another thing or so far forth as it is another thing as the building art is a potentiality that does not reside in the thing that is built but the art of healing when it constitutes a potentiality would reside in the person who is being healed but not so far forth as he is a person that is being healed therefore in general the first principle of change or of motion is said to be potentiality in another thing so far forth as it is another and potentiality is styled such from another thing or so far forth as it is another for according to this sense of potentiality is what is passive in any degree passive sometimes then if it may be possible also that anything whatsoever undergoes passion we say that thing involves the potentiality of being passive but sometimes we say that this is not the case as regards every passion but if it be passive in reference to what is better further is potentiality the capacity of accomplishing this particular thing well or doing so according to free will for sometimes persons who merely have been walking or speaking but yet who have not done so well or not as they would choose we would not say possessed the power or potentiality of speaking or walking but also in like manner is it in the case of passion further as many habits as according to which things are entirely devoid of passion or unchangeable or not capable of being easily altered into a worse state such are styled potentialities for things are broken indeed and rubbed together and bent and are in general subject to decay not from the having capacity but from the not having capacity or potentiality and from deficiency in some point other things however are impassive by such as scarcely and in a small degree become affected on account of potentiality and the possession of potentiality and the being in a certain manner disposed now seeing that potentiality is denominated in so many ways in the first place will also the potential be styled as that which possesses a first principle of motion or of change for even what is stationary is something potential in another thing or so far forth as it is another and in the second place if anything else of this should possess a capacity of this sort and in the third place if it involves such a capacity of bringing about a change in anything whatsoever whether into what is worse or into what is better for also that which is in a state of decay seems to be a thing capable of falling into decay otherwise it would not be corrupted if such were impossible but already has it a certain disposition of parts and a cause and first principle of such a passive condition 
sometimes however from the fact of possession and sometimes from the fact of privation does it seem to be a thing of this sort and if privation in a manner constitute a habit all things by the fact of the possession of something would be potentialities but the entity would be also expressed equivocally wherefore is a thing potential in respect of having a certain habit and first principle and in respect of involving the privation of this if it is admissible that it should involve privation and in the fourth place is a thing potential from the non-possession of a potentiality or a first principle of this in another or so far forth as it is another which is subject to corruption but moreover are all those things potential either in the mere accident of their being generated or not being generated or in respect of their being generated in an excellent manner for also in things that are inanimate is there such a capacity inherent as for instance in musical instruments for one lyre they say can send forth sound but that another does not possess this capacity if it be not fair sounding impotentiality however is a privation of potentiality and a certain removal of a first principle of such a sort as has been mentioned either entirely so or from being by nature adapted to have such or already to have such when it has been naturally fitted thereto also for we would not say that in like manner was it impotential or impossible for a man and an eunuch to beget a child but moreover according to both sorts of potentiality is their impotentiality opposed both to that merely which is capable of motion and to that capable of motion in an excellent manner and things are styled impotential some in accordance with this kind of impotentiality and others in another way as for instance both the possible and the impossible that indeed is a thing impossible the contrary of which is necessarily true as the commensurability of the diameter is a thing that is impossible because such a position in mathematics is false and the contrary of this is not only true but also must necessarily be so namely the incommensurability of the diameter its being commensurable accordingly is not merely false but must be false the contrary however to this is the possible when it is not necessary that the contrary should be false as for example the possibility of a man sitting for not necessarily is his being in a posture not of sitting a thing that is false the possible in one way therefore as has been stated signifies that which is not necessarily false but in another it signifies the being true and in another that which it is admissible may be true now this is what in geometry is figuratively styled potentiality these indeed therefore are things possible not so according to potentiality but all the things that are expressed according to potentiality are enumerated with reference to one original potentiality or capacity and this is a principle of change in another so far forth as it is another for the rest are styled potential partly in some other of them possessing such potentiality and partly in its non-possession thereof and partly in its being thus disposed in like manner also is it the case with things that are impotential wherefore the precise definition of the first potentiality would be a principle capable of bringing about a change in another thing or so far forth as it is another chapter thirteen quantity is denominated that which is divisible into things that are inherent of which either or each thing is adapted by nature to be a certain one thing and a certain particular thing of this sort multitude then indeed is a certain quantity if it may be numerable but magnitude if it may be measurable and multitude is styled that which is divisible in capacity into what is not continuous but magnitude into that which is continuous now of magnitude that which is continuous in one direction is length and that in two directions breadth and that in three depth but of these finite multitude is number and length is a line and breadth a superficies and depth a body moreover some things are said to be certain quantities in themselves or to be essential quantities 
but others quantities according to accident as a line to wit is a certain essential quantity whereas what is musical is a quantity according to accident now of quantities that are so essentially some are a certain quantity according to substance as for instance a line for in the definition expressive of what anything is a certain quantity is inherent but other quantities are passions and habits of such a substance as for example much and little and long and short and broad and narrow and high and low and heavy and light and the rest of such properties likewise both the great and the little and the greater and the less expressed both in reference to themselves and in relation to one another are the essential passions of quantity these names indeed are also transferred to other things of quantities however that are expressed according to accident some are so expressed as has been declared because what is musical is quantity and what is white is so in respect of there being a certain quantity in that subject wherein they are inherent and other things are quantities as motion and duration for these also are termed certain quantities and things continuous in respect of those things being divisible of which these are passive states now i mean not that which is in a state of motion but that which has had motion imparted to it for from the fact of that being quantity motion is likewise quantity and duration from the fact of this latter being quantity is regarded as quantity itself also chapter fourteen quality is styled in one way the difference of substance as man is a certain quality of animal because he is a biped and horse is a certain quality of animal because he is a quadruped and a circle is a certain quality of figure because it is without angles so that the difference constitutes the quality according to the substance now in this one way is quality styled the difference of substance but in another as things incapable of motion and mathematical entities just as numbers are certain qualities for example those that are compound and not only those which subsist in respect of one but those of which surface and solid are an imitation now these are plain square or cube numbers and in general whatever besides quantity inheres in substance for the being assumed once is the substance of each thing as for example the substance of the six is not twice three or thrice two but the being taken once for once six is six moreover as many things as are passive conditions of substances in a state of motion are called qualities as heat and cold and whiteness and blackness and gravity and lightness and whatever such like properties there are according to which the bodies of those things that are undergoing a change are said to be altered further are things qualities so far as they subsist according to virtue and vice and in general to what is bad and good so that almost in two ways may quality be expressed and in one of these which would be the most strict or appropriate for first indeed as quality is the difference of substance and a certain part of this also is the quality contained in numbers for this is a certain difference of substances yet either not of things that are being moved or not so far forth as they are being moved these however are passive conditions of things that are in motion so far forth as they are being moved and are differences of motions and virtue and vice are a certain portion of such passions for they make manifest the differences of motion and of energy in accordance with which those things that are in motion are agents and are passive in an excellent or a worthless manner for that which in this way possesses the power of motion or of energizing in this way is good and that which is moved and energizes in that way and in a contrary manner is worthless and most especially do what is good and bad signify quality in the case of animated natures and amongst these particularly does this apply to the case of those that possess free will chapter fifteen 
with respect to relatives they are denominated some of them as a twofold to a half and a threefold to a third and in general a multiple to a submultiple and excess to that which is exceeded and others of them as the calorific to that which is heated and the divisible to the divided and in general the active to the passive and others of them as the measurable to the measure and the object of scientific knowledge to science and the sensible to sense now regarding these relatives the first of them are expressed according to number either simply or by definition in respect of them or in respect of one as for example the twofold in respect of one is a definite number and the multiple is according to number in respect of one but such as is not defined as for example this or this particular number but the sesquialiter in relation to the subsesquialiter is according to number in relation to a definite number superpartient in relation to superpartient is according to the indefinite in the same manner as the multiple is in relation to one but that which exceeds in relation to that which is exceeded is in short indefinite according to number for number is commensurable but the excess and what is exceeded are denominated according to a non-commensurable number for that which exceeds is such in relation to that which is exceeded and something further than this but this is indefinite for whatsoever chances to be the result is either equal or not equal these things therefore which are relatives are all denominated according to number and are passive properties of numbers and further the equal and similar and same according to another manner are termed thus for all these are expressed according to the one for the same indeed are those things of which the substance is one but similar are those things of which the quality is one and equal are those of which the quantity is one and the one is the first principle and measure of number so that all these are denominated relations according to number indeed yet not in the same manner things active and passive however subsist according to an active and passive potentiality and according to energies that belong to potentialities as that capable of promoting heat to that which is heated because of its being endued with potentiality and again the making warm in relation to that which is made warm and one who severs in relation to that which is severed as things energizing are relatives but of those things that are relatives according to number these are not energies save only in the manner it has been mentioned elsewhere but energies according to motion do not subsist in numbers and of those things that are relatives according to potentiality some are already styled so according to periods of duration as for example that which forms in relation to that which has been formed and that which is likely to form in relation to that which is likely to be formed for so also is a father called the father of a son for there is something that partly has been active and partly passive further are some things considered relations according to the privation of potentiality for instance just as the impossible and as many things as are expressed in this way as for example the invisible things therefore denominated relatives according to number and potentiality are all of them so called because each derives that which it is from reference to another but not because something else is denominated with reference to it and the measurable and that which may be scientifically known and that which is an object of the intellect on account of something else being denominated in respect of them are styled relatives for also being an object of the intellect signifies that the intellect is exercised about this the intellect however does not subsist in relation to that about which the intellect is conversant for the same thing doubtless would be said twice in like manner also the power of sight is that of something and not of him to whom the sight belongs this however is a true statement but it is in relation to colour or something else of this kind yet in that way the same thing would be expressed twice i mean that sight is the sight of him of whom it is the sight 
things indeed therefore called relatives essentially are denominated partly in this way and partly if their genera are of this kind as for instance the art of healing belongs to those things that are relative because the science which is the genus of it seems to belong to those that are relatives we may subjoin as such those things according to which whatever they may be things that possess them are spoken of as relatives for example equality is a relation because of the equal being relative and similarity is a relation because of the similar being relative some things however are called relatives according to accident as man is a relative because it is accidental to him his being twofold and this belongs to those things that are relatives or the white is a relative if it is accidental to the same thing to be twofold and white end of chapter fifteen of book four recording in memory of mitchell edwards